Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, I think today's agenda is only with respect to uh, general studies paper one, uh, that too from the Indian society part. Okay, before we start, uh, and I was told that uh, the agenda for today is to discuss some previous year's questions as to how to approach these previous year's questions and two, uh, what do you do uh, for 2019 uh, mains examination, right? Uh, what are the issues? How, how do you prepare? So on and so forth, right? And what, uh, how can you maximize your score? More importantly, how can you maximize your score in the paper? Okay. Uh, before uh, we start, uh, let me get a sense of the crowd here. Uh, do we have anybody who is expecting to write the 2019 mains examination here? Anyone who's expecting to write the mains examination? Uh, some of you, very good, excellent. Uh, anybody who has already written the mains examination once? Yes, you've already written the mains examination, a couple of you, three. All right, very good. Uh, anybody who's attended the interview at least once? Attended the interview, UPSC interview at least once? No one? Fine, not a problem. Uh, yes. Now, the first thing is that uh, if you look at the uh, uh, mark sheets of the toppers, that is the ones who are in the top 100, right? Uh, usually they end up getting more in GS1, that is they get about uh, 110 to 120 marks, right, around this score, 110 to 120, right. This is the score uh, the toppers get, okay. Uh, now there is a reason behind this. The reason is now barring 2018, uh, 2018 has been an exception, uh, but uh, barring this 2018 we have, uh, we see that questions are quite straightforward in GS1, right. That is, they are asked directly from your NCRT books or uh, some standard books. They are asked directly from your standard books, particularly in your uh, modern Indian history uh, and uh, geography. Modern Indian history and geography, uh, this together makes up something like uh, 120 or 130 marks, 120 to 130 marks, right? Uh, now, questions in this part are very, very straightforward, right? So if you simply prepare from the basic books, that is your NCRT books, you will be able to do well here. Right? And I hope all of you already have, a, many of you who are planning to write the exam this year, already have a strategy for this part, okay, this part. That is you study from your basic NCRT books, all right. Uh, some of you may prepare some diagrams in advance, right. So this strategy is quite clear. How to get out of this 120, 130 marks, how to maximize scores, this strategy is somewhat clear, right. But many students find this Indian society part, which has about uh, 70 marks, 70 to 80 marks right, 70 to 80 marks, this part has been uh, somewhat difficult, right, somewhat difficult. Uh, the main reason behind this is that there is no uh, single source from which you can study topics in this paper, right, that is the problem, right. Uh, we have uh, NCRT sociology books, that is particularly the 12th standard books, but uh, those who have gone through these NCRT books will understand that they are very brief, they are very brief, uh, you cannot get, uh, you, you, you will understand that you won't be able to answer many questions from previous years just by studying these NCRT books. That is the problem, right? And in the market itself, we don't have any consolidated book which will give you all the information related to this Indian society module, right? That is the problem, right? Uh, so this 70 to 80 marks, this strategy, right? This is what uh, we want to discuss today, okay? Uh, now, if you plan well, it is possible to get like 50 here, 40 to 50, because now, once you know what to do in this module or want to do what to do in this part, it's very easy to get marks, right? Because uh, first thing is that the number of topics are very few. There are only about eight, eight topics. There are eight topics and as all of you know, questions are asked from these topics itself. Questions are asked from these topics itself, right? And this is the, the number of topics are few here. For example, if you compare it with geography and history, uh, there are many, many topics to cover in the geography and history part. Right? But in Indian society part, there are only eight topics and questions will be asked from these eight topics, right? So we need, uh, we'll discuss something, we'll speak about uh, what to do, what to do about these eight topics. TK, can someone tell me what are the eight topics? Salient features of Indian society, then diversity of India, population and associated issues, oh sorry. The next one is women and women's movement, right? Then population and associated issues. Now, then we have uh, poverty and developmental issues, poverty, deprivation, right? 
Uh, then we have issues related to urbanization. Then what is the other issue? Yes, globalization, impact of globalization on Indian society. Then we have in the last part, uh, communalism, secularism, regionalism. These are the topics that you have to cover for this, for this module, that is for that 70 to 80 marks, right? And questions are repeated, repeated from the same areas again and again, right? So the first thing that we should figure out is what to study in these topics, what to study in these topics. If you, can, if you have a clear map of what to study in these topics, that is job half done, according to me, right? Because say there is one topic that is secularism, right? Now what do you study in secularism? If you just go to a library and search for a good book on secularism, probably uh, you'll, you'll, you'll land up with uh, Rajiv Bhargava's book on secularism in India, right? It is 550 pages long. Uh, it is Oxford publication book, an excellent book. But then do you really have the time to read the entire book and then prepare for one topic from that big book? No, right? We don't. So what do we do about it, right? So uh, we need to, first of all, figure out what are the areas that we need to cover so that you can uh, use internet effectively to find out what to do, right? Uh, uh, let me just uh, do this one by one. Uh, salient features, right? Now this is the most vague topic, salient features of Indian society. This is very, very vague. Okay, what are these salient features, so on and so forth. But from what we understand from previous year's questions, there are four things that you are supposed to do here. One is caste, then tribe, family, religion. These are the four things that you are supposed to do in the salient features of Indian society, right? These are the four topics. Now, uh, what do you do in this? I want to uh, t do this in a little bit of detail so that you have an idea as to what, what you are supposed to study, right? Now in this cast. Uh, first is that uh, you need to clearly have uh, know what are the salient features of this caste system. Salient features, right? Salient features of this caste system, right? Because uh, we have seen that questions from this topic, that is caste in India, they are very application based. For example, if you don't understand what is this caste and what are the dynamics of this caste, you will never be able to answer a question like, for example, what explains uh, the statistic that sex ratios are worse off among uh, scheduled caste compared to scheduled tribes. If you don't understand the dynamics of this caste system, right, you will never be able to answer these kinds of questions. Or for example, whether Dalit identity politics can annihilate caste in India. You will never be able to answer these questions. Or caste is assuming new identities and associational forms, hence caste cannot be annihilated in India. Discuss, comment, like this. Right? Like this, these statements are very, very vague statements, very vague statements and in my personal opinion, they don't deserve to figure in the UPSC question paper. But then they ask these questions, right? What do we do about it, right? So uh, the first thing you need to do, do is find out about the salient features of this caste system. What do you understand by this caste system? That conceptual clarity is a must here in this topic, right? Uh, then you're supposed to be able to differentiate between uh, caste and caste system. Differentiate between caste and caste system. This is again very, very important. Even though they don't directly ask you to differentiate between these topics, it is germane to many questions that have been asked in UPSC. What is the difference between this caste and caste system? Right? Suppose they ask you a question. Now, this is this has been UPSC's favorite question at the interview stage. Uh, anybody with an anthropology or sociology optional, the first question they ask them is, do you think caste system is disintegrating in India? Or do you think caste system, India is becoming a class-based society from a caste-based society, right? These kinds of questions are asked, okay? And one fine day, and these are these have been asked in, the, in many optionals as well. They have been asked in many optionals as well, right? Now, if you can't differentiate between these terms, you will never be able to write a good answer, right? That is what you should know. What is the difference between this caste and caste system? And whether this is declining in India or this is declining in India, okay? Then for this year, it's important for you to prepare uh, this particular question. That is whether uh, Indian social stratification system, is Krishna here? No. You just give me a second, I'll get a mark. Mark 
second. Can you give me a new marker, please? Just give it to me, I'll take it. Give me a new marker, okay? Just give it to me. Okay, so I'll use this. Uh, in the meantime, please send a mark. Right. Okay. Uh, this question will be important this year. Uh, that is, uh, is Indian stratification system, stratification system, uh, becoming class-based from being a caste-based system? Why is this important this year? Anyone? No, it is, is important in the context of the EWS constitutional amendment, right? So they may they may simply ask you. Uh, so far, we have been using caste as the criteria for uh, determining inequality in Indian society. Is it true that India is becoming a class-based society, right? Uh, that is the kind of question they may ask you, right? That becomes very important this year. So you must be able to write an intelligent answer to these kinds of questions, right? Uh, so the, uh, uh, please remember that uh, the answer to these kinds of questions will never be in black and white, right? The answer will not be yes or no, okay? It will be somewhere in middle, right? You should argue that. Uh, caste continues to be an important determinant of inequality in India, whereas class is also emerging as a form of stratification in Indian society, right? You are supposed to make that point in an intelligent manner, right? That is something that is important. Then, uh, yes, uh, new demands for inclusion into OBC list. This becomes very important this year, right? Last year, many people were expecting these kinds of questions. They, they, they didn't ask it. Right? And UPA, UPSC has a tendency of asking such questions after one year gap. Right? So, this new demands for inclu inclusion into OBC list. Right? Uh, the question that you must prepare is why? Why are, there why are there these demands? They won't ask you whether they should be given OBC reservation or not. They won't ask you that question. Right? They will ask you uh, why is it that these people are asking for inclusion into OBC list? That question will be asked. Right? It has been covered extensively in many newspapers. Right? EPW has carried many articles on the matter. Right? This year, so they'll ask you questions like this. Okay? This is one important area that you must prepare. Then the other important area you must prepare is with respect to this subcategorization, subcategorization of OBC. OBC. This is what you should prepare. Subcategorization of OBC, right? Uh, what is the committee that is looking into this matter? Rohini committee, Justice Rohini committee, right? Uh, now this Justice Rohini committee, it has not yet given its report. It's likely to give out its report in another one month, right? Uh, the question that will be asked is, what are the difficulties in subcategorizing OBCs? That will be the question that will be asked, right? If it was so easy to subcategorize OBCs, they would have done it long before, right? They would have done it long back. What is the problem? And this Justice Rohini Commission was supposed to give its report in six months. Uh, it has been more than 14 months now and it has not yet given its report, right? It means that there are some problems in coming up with a methodology to subcategorize these OBCs. What is this problem, right? What are the problems germane to subcategorization of OBCs? Discuss, comment like this, okay? That, that question becomes important, okay? That is what you should prepare. Now, apart from this, uh, this UPSC is favorite is how to end caste system, right? How to end caste. This is the basic question. They ask it in so many convoluted ways, right? Now, this is, a, uh, this is also somewhat of a injustice that they want you to end 
uh, 3 millennia old uh, institution in 150 words, okay? Uh, that is, uh, so, uh, it's, it's a problem to, to write about this, but prepare an answer for this, right? You need some perspective as to how to end this caste system, annihilation of caste, right? How do you end caste system or whether caste system can be ended in India, right? That is what you should prepare. Uh, just one, one thing, uh, when, you, when you prepare this caste versus caste system, there are certain things that you must prepare, right? Uh, one is what is the impact of colonial rule on caste? What is the impact of colonial rule on caste in India, right? Uh, if you have the time, uh, there is an article on JSTOR uh, by M. N. Srinivas, right? It's called Caste in Modern India. Just go through that article. It is about uh, 12 pages long, right? If you just go through that article, you will get a very good idea as to what has happened to caste system in the last 2-300 uh, years, right? It will give you a good perspective as to uh, what to write in your paper, right? Impact of colonial rule on caste and uh, you must also prepare what is the meaning of this Sanskritization. Meaning of this Sanskritization. The answer to that sex ratio question was Sanskritization. Okay. We will see how that is the case. Right. So, you must know this much in caste. Okay. This is what you are supposed to know. And when you find out uh, the uh, impact of colonial rule on caste, uh, you would have been, uh, uh, you will be in a position to answer that other question. That is, caste is assuming new identities and associational forms, hence caste cannot be annihilated in India. Right. This is what it is. So, figuring out what to do is the first thing, right? Uh, now, with respect to these tribes, right? Now, usually questions related to tribes are asked in your GS2 paper, okay? Mostly questions related to tribes are asked in your GS2 paper, right? And now, let me put down uh, everything here. There are some, some basic important things that you should know about tribes. Uh, first is that, uh, what are the various uh, constitutional protections? Constitutional protections, okay? And also statutory protections. Statutory protections, okay, for tribes. This is one basic question. It has been repeated again and again, right? Uh, now, uh, what I want to tell you is uh, something that some, this is some one point that I want to get across. Some of you have already written the mains examination, and you'll realize that uh, uh, in spite of doing the same amount of work, your scores are not on par with the people who are topping. What is the reason, right? Uh, many people have these kinds of questions. Uh, this is what it is. Okay. Uh, the people, see, you have to remember first of all, now at this stage, because you are writing the mains examination, this is less of a, a knowledge based examination and more of a remembering based examination, okay? Uh, they are, actually, it is impossible to test somebody's knowledge in such wide variety of things in three hours, okay? It's a very remembering based examination, right? So what do I mean by this? So when you, when you remember, when you study this constitutional protections related to tribes, Right, the difference between somebody who gets high marks and somebody who gets average marks is that both of them know the constitutional protections. This person who gets high marks knows also the article number. Okay, all everybody knows that Forest Rights Act, PESA, all these statutory protections are there. The person who gets high marks knows the year, like this, 19. Okay, this is what will give you that additional boost that will give you this additional boost. Half mark, one mark here, there, together it will be 70, 80 marks and you will be the topper. That is what they do. Okay. Don't think that uh, those who top actually know something more. They don't actually. Okay. What they know is this. These article numbers, committee report name, years in which acts are passed. This is how you are supposed to prepare. Okay. Just another example. Uh, suppose uh, you keep correcting papers. There are two types of people, right? Someone, Mr. A, this is something I am fond of telling in the class. Uh, Mr. A, suppose you are supposed, uh, the question is about unequal status of women in Indian society, right? That this Mr. A who does not qualify the mains examination, he writes something like this, right? Uh, there is a, there is a difference between, difference in the average wage, average wage earned by men and women. This will be one point in the answer, like this, okay? This is the person who would get average marks and he would not qualify the examination, right? Uh, then some Miss B, right? Miss B, uh, she gets AIR 10 or AIR 100 like this. Uh, this is how she will write, okay? She will say that according to the World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report 2018, 
the uh, the gender wage gap in India is 35 percent. Is 35 percent. That is what this this woman will get. Now this person will qualify. This person will not. And it is the same point. This person also has read about this global gender gap report, right? Uh, uh, and he knows that. Uh, there is a difference between the average age, wage that is earned between men and women, and that is one reason for socio-economic uh, inequality with respect to gender. But the difference is that uh, this person has cared to note this down and revise it before going to the examination and has the presence of mind to incorporate these kinds of statistics and information. That is the only difference. That is the only difference between those who pass and those who don't. Right? How much of this can you do? How much of this can you do? Three, four times in every answer, if you can do this, if you can exhibit your remembering skills, then you will be through. Okay, but there is a danger here. Don't do it in a in an out of context manner. Okay, the statistic and report should be within the context. If you write the wrong report, wrong statistics, then it is not done. Okay, this is the idea. Okay, so uh, with respect to tribes. You will do this constitutional and statutory protections, one, right? Uh, when you do this, also uh, make a short note of the performance. The performance of these constitutional and statutory protections, how well have they performed or whether they have performed or not. And uh, what can be done to improve them, how to improve, how to improve them. This is what you should also figure out. Right. Then there are, from this year's point of view, this Forest Rights Act 2006, this becomes very, very important. All of you know why. Forest Rights Act 2006 becomes very important for this year's examination. Okay. Then, this, favorite, UPSC's favorite again. Okay. How is this PESA different from 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act? What is the rationale behind this PESA? Right, and uh, whether it has been functioning well or not, or whether it has achieved its objectives or not. Critically analyze whether PESA has achieved its objectives or not. That question. Right. Then another question. This, what is the difference between fifth schedule and sixth schedule area? Basic. Fifth schedule and sixth schedule area. Okay. This is what you should see. Now these are the questions that are more likely to appear in your GS2. Right. Uh, from our GS1 point of view. Uh, know about, uh, again, as with caste, some salient features of this, salient features of tribes, okay, salient features of tribes uh, and also uh, the process of assimilation of tribes, the process of assimilation of tribes, nobody, process of assimilation of tribes. Uh, I think the, uh, the chapter in NCRT is decent on this matter. The chapter on tribes in the, your NCRT is decent, okay? So you can simply study these aspects uh, from your NCRT book. Okay? Uh, when you do assimilation of tribes, uh, you should you should look at the impact of colo uh, colonialism, impact of colonialism on scheduled tribes in India. What has been the impact of colonialism on scheduled tribes in India? This is also mentioned in your NCRT book, right? This is what you should do for your tribes chapter. Okay, this is enough. And when you look at the salient features of tribe, right, just try to broadly understand, broadly understand how is this tribal culture different from the culture of mainstream Hindu society. That difference is becomes very important. Yes, ma'am? Nothing? That difference is very important. Okay. Now, uh, then uh, we have family, right? Now, there was only one question that was asked on family in 2014. Uh, and uh, probably the examiner realized that that is too much of a sociology optional question that was asked, right? The examiner realized that uh, there are no topics which are GS type in family and they have stopped asking questions but we never know, right? Family. Okay. Uh, all of you know that the general, the general folk knowledge is that traditional India had joint family and modern India, in, in the modern societies, we have nuclear families. All of you know this folk language, right? Folk wisdom, right? Just know that is actually not true, but just uh, remember that, okay? Traditional India has joint families and uh, modern societies have nuclear families. If that is the equation, uh, reasons for disintegration of joint families. 
reason for this integration of joint joint family joint family system in india this is what you should know uh, now this upsc has a tendency of asking cultural factors socio economic factors like this so divide this into three types right uh, what are the economic factors what are the socio cultural factors socio cultural factors and what are the legal factors okay what are the legal factors right which led to the disintegration of uh, joint family system in india okay that is what you should know of course when you do this you will anyway know what is this joint family what is it what is it? okay uh, now uh, here uh, i want to tell you one more thing okay uh, which is the difference between average master and top master right uh, that is uh, this joint